performing ensemble, Queen Victoria's Consort, and the collection of brass instruments known as the Kershaw Collection. My name is Jeremy West, and some of you may know me as a cornetto player and as a founder member of the performing ensemble His Majesty's Sackbuts and Cornets. In this ensemble, Queen Victoria's Consort, however, I'm absolutely delighted to play the alto horn, like this one that I'm holding now, which is by Adolf Sax, Paris, 1868. It gives huge pleasure to me music from this generation on instruments that are actually original as opposed to instruments that are copies of, or faithful copies even, of museum originals. With me I have my good friend and colleague Andy Kershaw, he's the owner of the collection and he is the founder of Queen Victoria's Consort. Andy. Thank you Jeremy. I formed Queen Victoria's Consort in 2016 and we came together with a small collection of instruments that were owned by the members of the ensemble. The more we played together as a group, the more I wanted to hear some diverse 19th century instruments being used. And I went looking for playable originals or originals that could be restored to play condition that we could bring to life within the ensemble and we could share with our audiences. And we're very pleased to be sharing today with the Historic Brass Society. For me personally, one of the most exciting things about playing in Queen Victoria's Consort is having access to this fabulous collection, the Kershaw Collection. Andy, say a few words for us, would you please, about the most notable instruments in the collection. Some of the highlights for me are the seven instruments by Adolf Sachs that date between 1846 and 1865. Playing on these instruments and certainly playing them together within an ensemble really brings them to life. They were intended to be played as a family group and you can hear those instruments being used on our performance of the Mendelssohn Wedding March. Some of the wooden instruments, the bass horns and serpents, are personally very exciting to me because they're the instruments that I use within the ensemble on the bass parts. And some of those instruments, like the Offi Monoclide that I own by Coffet, is a very good playing example. And as lovely as these instruments are to look at, one of the most exciting things for me and for the other members of the group is to hear these instruments brought back to life. In this time period, there were a lot of new innovations and designs. Do, what instruments do we have that, that show this particularly? I think the, um, the disc valve cornet by Kerr that's around 1840 is a, a very fine surviving playable example of this type of valve system. It looks absolutely fantastic but it also sounds very sweet and very different to the modern cornet, especially in the hands of Robert Van Ryan. Also, a cornopian which features McFarlane's clapper key. Anyone familiar with the Arban cornet method will see the drawings of these two particular instruments in the early pages. These cornets, by the time that these drawings were added to the Arban, were already something of a relic, with the valve systems having moved forward and the more common Perrine valves taking over. 
The ensemble Queen Victoria's Consort, using instruments from the Kershaw Collection, plays both original 19th century brass ensemble music and also arrangements that have been done by expert musicians such as Alan Gout and Robert Van Rijn of pieces of music of the time but with an innovative and modern twist. Part of the fun is working out which instruments blend together and suit the parts for each piece of music. So Jeremy, could you tell us a little bit of the differences between performing on an early sax hall compared to perhaps a more modern tenor hall or equivalent? Playing on the original instrument is a really interesting and for me thrilling experience uh, because the bore of the instrument, as you can see from the pictures, is so very fine compared to the modern. We all know that, but what does that really mean? What that means is you get a really, really fine focus on the sound. And above all, for me, much more vocal in quality than you can ever get from something that's much wider bored. So when you then match those instruments together with others from the same family as we as you'll see us doing in the wedding march at the end of this you'll see that you've got all the instruments with a very fine bore and no matter how hard you push it you just get a like a it's almost like a laser like quality coupled with a certain translucency and again it doesn't matter how hard you push the instrument will not allow you to go so far that the sound spreads so you keep that really tight bright sound which when you get it in tune with everybody else and the harmonics fly off the top then you get a real thrilling ride the likes of which you simply don't get from the modern equivalent in my experience it's sometimes said that the earlier brass instruments, and it's perhaps true of the early wooden 19th century brass instruments, that these instruments are quieter. But I think that when they're played together, the combination of the sounds gives it a, a, a volume that, that is greater than the sum of its parts. I think that's absolutely true. Going back to the 17th century cornet, of course, it's a very small horn, but especially by modern standards, and yet by projection, focus and energy, you can send the sound to the furthest corner of the biggest building. Of that there's no doubt and that's why the cornet was the most favoured wind instrument of its time in the early 17th century. But when you get into the Queen Victoria's Consort, you've still got similar rules, if you like, that are coming into play all the time. You get that same energy, that same focus. You get all the instruments together and that, as Andy so rightly points out, the sum of the whole is much greater than its parts. The 19th century was a time of great industrial revolution and brass instrument evolution. A village band or an early brass band, certainly in the United Kingdom, might have played on instruments with piston valves, rotary valves, keys and slides. And sometimes within the ensemble, we get a very sweet sound by combining instruments with these very different operating systems.
integral part of building a playable collection of antique instruments is restoring and maintaining fine examples to be used within the ensemble and we're very pleased to have one particular expert restore and repairer at our disposal within Queen Victoria's consort. So this, ex this instrument, for example, the Adolf Sachs um, alto horn that um, belongs to me actually, this particular one, and I'm very, very proud to be the owner, or perhaps I should say custodian of it, uh, was restored by Nicholas Perry uh, to fabulous playing condition. Um, Andy was the one who tracked it down for me. It's one of three of its kind in the United Kingdom. When we got it, it was missing its second valve bow. And this is a brand new part, manufactured specially by hand by Nicholas Perry. Also, one of those three valve caps that you can see was also missing. And that one of those is a brand new part, again, manufactured by hand by Nicholas. And to have that level, I'm not going to tell you which one it is, see if you can get it, but I don't think you will. And to have that level of skill available makes Queen Victoria's Consort a really viable institution, if I can use that word. Another thing that makes it a, a fabulously vibrant place to be is the wonderful musical um, reconstructions and arrangements that are done for us, as said before, by Robert Van Ryn and by Alan Gout. And so, altogether, we have an outfit which is playing original instruments, maintaining a collection, an important collection, and building it, and using it in every which way we can possibly imagine. Thank you for watching this short presentation, and I do hope that you've enjoyed finding out a little bit about Queen Victoria's Consort and the Kershaw Collection. If you'd like to find out more, please visit our website and our virtual museum, and also enjoy our hour-long free virtual concert. We're going to finish with a performance of the Wedding March by Mendelssohn, featuring some of the instruments by Adolf Sachs.